Okay, good evening, sisters and brothers. And Rhonda last week in sharing her story, the way in which God worked in her life, shared with us the way in which that fitted into a much bigger plan that brought about through her meeting Rose and many other people live in water community. Something that these new movements, something that happened not just here, but has happened in many places in the world. One spirit at work. So, if we were attentive to that, we should be asking ourselves, how, firstly, how does the experience of God in my own life fit into the much bigger picture that the Spirit is doing? The work of God in our world. Building church. Continuing the work of Jesus. Establishing the kingdom. Not just through our praise and worship, but through our acts of mercy and etc. Justice, etc. And if we don't have an answer to that, maybe the other question is, have I had an experience of God? That has allowed me to, to touch, as it were, to glimpse the divine. To experience a tremendous love of God that is continuously at work. Because when we speak about these new movements and we speak about who we are as living water, what we're speaking about is the work of the Holy Spirit. Let me just share something from Pope John Paul II, Blessed John Paul II. And he said this at Pentecost in 1998, one of the gatherings of the new movements in Rome. He said, whenever the Spirit intervenes, He leaves people astonished. He brings about events of amazing newness. He radically changes persons and history. Whenever the Spirit intervenes, He leaves people astonished. So, are you astonished? Have you experienced the way in which God is moving and shaping your own life and recognize the bigger picture to the way in which he's inviting you to community? Pope Benedict XVI, Pope Emeritus, in his reflecting on the new movement, he said, but suddenly, here was something that no one had planned. Here the Holy Spirit himself had, so to speak, taken the floor. Here was something no one had planned. And then he goes on in in this document he wrote while he was cardinal, reflecting on the new movement. He goes on to trace out the, the way in which the Spirit worked through history from the time of the apostles all the way till now, raising up new orders, raising up new movements and communities to continue the work of God. To bring this newness. Pope Benedict again. I must say quite clearly here that the apostolic movements appear in ever new forms throughout history. Necessarily because they are the Holy Spirit's answer to the changing situations in which the church lives. So why are there new movements? Because it's the Holy Spirit's answer to the changing situations in which the church lives. God continuously with his people, Emmanuel, through the Holy Spirit. As we heard in the the confirmations and as we've been praying, that the Holy Spirit is with us. I will send you the Spirit of truth who will lead you to complete truth. The promise of Jesus himself. And sometimes we can imagine this happening in some great phenomenal way out there, but not realize that in concrete ways it happens in the church, in our lives, 
and in the church in community. The Holy Spirit providing an answer through communities, through the new movement, to the changing situations in which the, word, the, word, um, in which the church lives. He continues, the Holy Spirit always has surprises in store. And only in retrospect do we recognize that the movements have a common sense in the midst of their great diversities. In other words, when you look at not just us as living water, but when you look at many of the other movements, not just here in Trinidad, like Eternal Light Community, but if you were to look worldwide, the Focolare Movement, Communion and Liberation, Count Sao Nova, Um, Shalom community, and on and on and on, the Emmanuel community in France, etc. You realize in the midst of this great diversity, there is a commonness, to which Rhonda tested to when she said, whenever they gathered, it it was like we were all doing the same thing, and people shared the Holy Spirit at work. The Holy Spirit at work. So you may begin to ask, well, where do I fit into all of this? You know, it's, it's all right that Rhonda has had this experience and other people. And sure, we can't all commit at, the, at these levels. So where do I fit into all of this? And one of the things that the new communities offer, as the Holy Spirit attends to the situations in which the world lives, is that it offers a way of living for each person wherever you are, whoever you are. Whether you're a young person, whether you're single, whether you are married, whether you feel a call to a consecrated life, whether that be one that is lived not in community or in community, whether you feel a call to be a priest, That new communities, not just here, worldwide, people answering all these levels of vocation find life in the new communities. And that's how you fit in. This life is manifested through, for instance, I'm going to just pull on some people, through, for instance, our committed couples. Richard and Davy. Richard, would you come and <laughs> stand by your wife? You know, an example of commit, committed couples in our community. Kathleen and Charles. Through people who have given themselves to a consecrated life and do not live in community. We have our two sisters here. Stephanie and Yvonne, could you stand please? Through people who have given themselves, we have Andrew on the camera as well, by the way. (laughs) People who have given themselves within the household community, living together, laying down their lives for whatever God wants through the community. Rosemary Lilias, Monsignor Mike, myself, Charmaine. People who are covenant members, who have journeyed through the community and have entered into a program of formation, come to the water, and other things, and and journey and allow themselves to be to enter into the flow of the stream, to enter into this way of living the Christian life, its spirituality, to enter into the apostolate, the ministry of the community. And we have many covenant members here. Maybe our covenant members could stand. Let's see our covenant members. Praise God. Praise God.
You see, when we, when we think about community, one of the things we could begin thinking about is, oh, I see Live in Water, and I, the first thing we think about automatically is, I know all their ministries. How many have a pastoral and social ministries? Many of them. And I know the work that they do. But at one level, that's, that's what we do. It's not who we are. When we begin to talk about who we are, we are speaking about the way in which we answer the call from God to live in the stream, to drink deeply of its water, and therefore what we offer the church and the kingdom of God is what we do. Amen? Yeah. Present in, in the ways in which we, we develop and live our, offer our gifts for the building of the kingdom and for each other. In love. As our mission statement says, joyfully laying down our lives in the service of the kingdom of God. I think we have some copies. Oh, they're still here. <laughs> yeah, let's, let's distribute them. You know, when we think about who is living water, well, there's a mission statement, for instance. And our mission says that the living water community is a Catholic family on the journey to holiness. A Catholic family. That's, that's what all of us here are. People from varied backgrounds, social, racial, cultural, etc., Come in. Come in. Just as we hear in the reading from the prophet Isaiah, Oh, let all who are thirsty come. Though you have no money, come. Because what we come to is to drink deeply from the Lord. So we are a Catholic family on this journey to holiness. Empowered by the Spirit of Jesus, we strive to be His healing presence to all who thirst. United in love, prayer, and mission, we joyfully lay down our lives in the service of the kingdom of God. Who are we? We are living water. Having drunk deeply, from the Lord. Have an experience this call from the Lord to, to share community, to build community, and to minister to his people. How do you fit in? Well, we saw it. You could be a covenant member. If you're a couple, you could become a committed couple within a community. There's a space for young people. You may feel a call to live a consecrated life. Taking the promises of poverty, chastity, and obedience. You may feel a call to live that life within the community context in our household. Or, you may say, well, not me as yet. I'll just probably work in a ministry or attend prayer meetings, etc. And that's fine too. We have many people who are, as it were, associated with us. But what it is, is that vision that, that we see in Ezekiel, where we read that wherever the water flows, it brings life. Wherever the water flows, it brings life. In other words, you come and drink, and wherever you go out, uh, you carry God's living water, and you carry life. And therefore, anyone can drink. Because the Lord says, go. Pope Francis, in his message to the ecclesial movements on Pentecost Sunday, said, go. Continue to go out. Go out, go out. Never let that missionary zeal dry up. 
Because what does the Spirit do? The Spirit sends us out. Empowered by the Holy Spirit, we go out. As our mission statement says, joyfully, empowered by the Holy Spirit, we joyfully lay down our lives in the service of the kingdom of God. Amen? Amen. So there is a place for you. And if you do want to know more, well, you should inquire. You should inquire. Because the truth is that the Come to the Water is a three-month program that we run, usually, three or four months, usually September to December each year. And, and what we're doing here can never cover that. So this is just a taste. But it's a taste to open up our minds and understandings because so many people do not understand not just who we are, but who the new movements are. We imagine it's something that's happening in the church in Rome. That, sadly enough, re- many religious and clergy are unaware fully of how do we speak about and, and grasp these new movements. But the church has a lot that it's saying about the new movements. In fact, the Vatican has just put out a book on the, the churches, a, a symposium that, that was held in Rome, speaking to bishops about the new movements. And how do you care for them? And, and how do you treat them? The new movements. The Holy Spirit take on the floor the Holy Spirit's answer to the changing situations in which the church lives. So you should be asking yourself, okay, so do I want to be part of this? Do I not just want to share in, its, in the doing, meaning in the ministry, but do I want to share in the being that it is? To share in the life that God is offering in this world. Let's read our mission statement together again. The Living Water Community is a Catholic family on the journey to holiness. Empowered by the Spirit of Jesus, we strive to be His healing presence to all who thirst. United in love, prayer, and mission, we joyfully lay down our lives in the service of the Kingdom of God. Joyfully. Amen? Amen. Amen. So, so there's a structure of our being. Okay? So we all we have these these different, as it were, categories, depending on who you are, married, single, etc. Okay? And how does God how how do you experience God speaking to your heart? The other aspect of it is when we Look at these categories. Everyone drinks of the living water. And what that is, or what we could call that, is our way of of being, our spirituality. So what is our spirituality? What is it, what is this way that, that we live our lives that is centered on Jesus? How is it expressed in our daily lives? Well, there's a spirituality statement too. And it says that we're a Catholic, charismatic, missionary community. Catholic, charismatic, missionary community. And each of those words mean, could be unpacked. Not now. (laughs) Our spirituality is rooted in the gospel. And the teaching of the church. Now, that first section of the of the spirituality statement, what we could think of when we hear that is the vertical of the cross, you know, our relationship with God. Catholic charismatic missionary community, rooted in the gospel. Rooted in the gospel and the teaching of the church. 
And then we could think of the horizontal dimension of the cross. The way in which it reaches to each other. For Jesus says to us that we must love one another. And so our spirituality statement continues. Our way of life as disciples of Jesus leads to conversion of heart, individuation, and a preferential option for the poor. Conversion of heart, individuation, and a preferential option for the poor. Again, the vertical, our relationship with God, that we are a Catholic charismatic missionary community rooted in the gospel and the teaching of the church. Because all the new movements are part of the church. And then the vertical dimension, the way it reaches out to the horizontal sorry, dimension, the way it reaches out to each other. That as disciples of Jesus, as those who follow Jesus, it leads us to conversion of heart, something that we do every day, not just a one and done experience, but every single day and every moment, God is, as it were, working on us. And as it were, we are supposed to be yielding, just letting go to allow God to do what God wants. Conversion of heart. Individuation. The word that we usually spend quite a bit talking about. But basically, a Jungian term, Jungian psycholo- um, psychology term, that basically means we flourish in the way God desires us to flourish. That we become who God desires us to be. That we actualize the potential that God has given us through our talents, gifts, and ourselves. The gift that we are in this world. That we allow that gift to flourish. To realize who we are. Through the grace of God, of course. And then, preferential option for the poor. Something that became a key phrase coined, I think, in the bishops' conferences in Latin America. Medina. Medellin. You know, this um, the sense of the poor are God's gift to us. A preferential option for the poor. And that in touching that poverty, we too touch our own poverty. That we come into healing as we too share that water. That they feed us in ways that we can never imagine as we think we're feeding them in one way. Spirituality. So, what we've looked at is the fact that these new movements, so far, just a little recapping, these new movements flourished after the Second Vatican Council. And as the Holy Fathers have said, it's a work of the Holy Spirit, continuing the work of Jesus in the present times in which we live, changing realities of our world. So therefore, we live in water, a new movement. And many people know our ministries. But that's it doing. But what holds that doing is a sense of being that is supported by a structure that finds itself in having married couples, singles, people consecrated to the Lord, covenant members, people who are associated with us. But whoever comes drinks deeply of the spirituality of the community. The call that we have experienced God saying to us, live in this way. Live in this way. A spirituality that is charismatic and contemplative in many ways. So, you should be asking yourself, is God inviting me to this? And if he is, then come and drink. 
Of course, this is not the only way. But if God is inviting you, then come and drink. Come and inquire. Come and make the journey with us. And allow yourself to, to see a much bigger picture. What God is doing, not just here, but worldwide. Worldwide. Praise God. Amen. So, stay tuned for more Come to the Water. <laughs>